We are here at Seri for the Perth Giants. My name is Prash, this is Sarah. Welcome. And we are with Matthew of Lead Time Solutions. How are you doing? Yeah, good. A bit nervous. Awesome. You're number one off the bat. Looking forward to it. For our brand new show. Mm. Yeah, are you excited? Nice to, nice to meet the Giants. Yeah. And what are you looking for today? Uh, looking for uh, guidance as well as a bit of uh, capital coming in. Great. Um, we're looking at scaling up our operations, so we're looking for cash and very handy. What's your goal? What are you uh, after? Well, our goal we're looking to raise around 178,000. Okay. Um, and yeah, we're doing this in the hopes that we can launch in uh, January 2023. And you're going to give them anything? A little bit of a percent back. Ah, uh, yeah, yes. we've got a good deal. Okay. Right. Yeah. Awesome. You'll have to wait and see. Beautiful. Well, right. we wish you the best, Matthew. Great. Jump on inside and here's to the future. Thank okay. you very much. Yeah. Cheers. Good luck. Hi Giants, my name is Matthew Ness, I'm the Founder and Managing Director of Lead Time Solutions um, from Dogview, Perth, Western Australia. I'm here today seeking 18%, well, offering 18% equity in exchange for $178,000. This is for my product, Derive. <coughs> so, Derive is Australia's first virtual economy. We've created virtual real estate locations for residential and commercial use. These locations have been built social media functions as well as e-commerce tools. <coughs> the world itself is powered by an immersive search engine, kind of like Google, but in a much more exciting way. Um, <coughs> yes, <laughs> sorry. Rather nervous. Um, yes, yeah, I'm nervous too. Oh, um, very uh, nervous. Uh, if you could break if you just keep it fairly loud because I'm a little bit deaf. Of course. No worries. So yeah, we sell virtual real estate. That is what we do. Um, the real estate can be used for anything. Now, we have three years worth of R&D activity supporting this, and we've just achieved an early stage innovation company in private building status from the ATO. We have $3.1 million in digital real estate locations that we're looking to sell in early 2023. This is our goal for a pre-order sale to help fund development for future, future work. <laughs> um, let me watch, sorry. <laughs> I've literally practiced this quite a few times, but for some reason I'm just breaking out. But, um, yeah, that's essentially what we've been doing. I've been working on this full time for the last three years. Um, and yeah, it's been a hell of a journey. The, lots of stories, lots of interesting things happen. But yeah, it's, um, we're looking at scaling up now, so that's why I'm here today. Can, can I ask you, you've raised 410000 so far. Yes. How much equity have you given up for that 410000 uh, given up quite a bit. Um, so percentage terms? Percentage terms have probably given away around 60% so far. Um, obviously being pre-revenue at the original stage, it was just a concept. Um, didn't have any concept drawings or anything like that. The real value came from the partnerships that we established. Um, so I partnered up with a group called Taurus Games over in Melbourne. Um, so they work with Disney, LucasArts, um, Warner Brothers. They're quite a um, high-end title game developer. Yep. Uh, we've recently just partnered with a digital builder called Cyrus. Um, so Cyrus are working on actually building a brand, um, creating a front-end website as well to reach our community, um, and basically scale up our marketing and sales. Mm -hmm. So they're hopefully going to be finished in uh, around January next year. So they've got a team of about 40 working on this right now. Yeah. I'm a tech enthusiast and a non-expert, but how does it work? So when you invest in virtual real estate, then that virtual real estate will increase in value. Is that what will happen? Essentially, kind of like a simulation of the real world real estate market. Um, so we essentially have created these locations to be like a front runner for, for that space. Um, there isn't really anyone in Australia doing this side of things right now. Um, so what we thought is that, you know, we create the, the hub where everyone can come into one location, a central distribution sort of network, um, where both, you know, you've got business to business activity as well as business to consumer activity. 
um, being a double-edged sword as well. You need content, but then the content providers want your people to be involved as well. So, you know, over the three years of R&D, we've come up with some tools that we think can overcome those issues. Um, and yeah, that's, that's really what we're here. So, one more question. I noticed on that image you've got there, you've got Netflix and Tosca. And others. Is it your vision that people advertise through your platform? You're generating on that as well. Exactly. So um, we're looking into blockchain and crypto at this stage, um, more around NFTs, um, so digital de deeds of ownership. Um, each real estate location has opportunities for virtual billboards, advertising space, um, things along that sort, uh, in a less um, abrupt manner than what people see in you know, web to like the current internet pop-up banners and things like that. This is more, you'll be walking along the street and you'll see a billboard like in, in the real world. So we really try to simulate real world activity in a virtual environment. So there's no barrier to entry uh, for others to do this and to set up their own city, if you like, or their own town or their own country, for that matter. Um, so how do you make yours the New York of this of the metaverse? Oh, the new fair? Yeah. Well... <laughs> Would you rather buy? Would you rather own real estate early days in New York, or would you rather own real estate early days in Perth? I own real estate in Perth. That's no, um, The barriers for entry are actually quite difficult um, yep. to replicate what we've done. Yep. Um, it's not exactly the front end. Anyone can really make what we've made in the front end. Yep. The back end is where we've uh, really sort of made it sophisticated. So it's a highly intuitive system. It's kind of like Squarespace if you've ever used a website building application, um, you know, mixed in with something like Amazon, for example. So um, we have sort of set up the, the real estate locations as more like a developer, a virtual developer, um, but the tools we've provided uh, to the people that will guide these locations, um, they'll use those for their own sort of freedom, essentially creative freedom. So they'll basically, you know, create a storefront, for example, um, or like say Western Power is one we've been talking to uh, about a year ago now for virtual inductions and training. So. There's a big talk about reducing people's carbon footprints. Um, you know, you can run the same simulation millions of times with you know, barely any of a carbon footprint compared to a you know, physical-based environment uh, simulation. So, yeah. So when you talk about uh, the tools you've developed, what kind of tools is taken? Take us through that. Yeah, yeah sure. So um, we've got basically custom lobby editors. So if you can see here, we've got um, obviously a range of buildings. So when a user's in the actual environment, they'll open the front door and then they go into what we call lobby. Um, so this lobby can be set up for any use. It can be private business, um, you know, you can have a public facing, kind of like a website, but in a simulated environment. So, you know, supermarkets, for example, I've been speaking to a couple of those about potentially having, you know, if you've got, say, a mom with three kids that can't exactly get down to the shop, they can basically put on a headset, uh, walk through a real life 3D model of the supermarket. Instead of scrolling through and, you know, trying to find nutritional information, they can actually pick up products <coughs> like they would in the real world, put it into their cart and walk out, all in the comfort of their environment. Those are things, you know, visions that they're really trying to express to people. Um, and the technology is actually here now. So, um, you know, the files that we currently use for general websites and things like that, um, they can all be replicated into an immersive setting um, with no additional work. So. Now you got my attention. Now you got my attention. At that point, you really, you, um, the application for that outside of just a virtual world of, of, of real estate in direct businesses, um, have you seen it anywhere else? Um, there's been use, use cases around the world. Um, so there's been a couple of startups similar to us, um, one in Europe, one out of America. Um, they're pre revenue as well. Um, their valuations are far higher than ours. Um, yeah. Um, we've tried to take the more and moderate approach, um, sort of start ground up and work our way there. But um, yeah, there's there's some groups that are looking into this space. Um, mm. I've looked at some industry reports around Australia. I've got a list of about 300 or so um, early adopters in the space that are looking at virtual reality and immersive technology and how they can create benefits for their mm. organisations. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.